This week we're going to get into talking a little bit about the nervous system and this really is kind of the bulk of what we do in 227. So we're going to spend almost the rest of the semester looking at the nervous system and just the last week and a half um, we'll get into the endocrine system. So before we start the system, what I want to do is give you a little bit of information just basically about what it does. The nervous system is in charge of regulating and coordinating everything that's going on in the body, so all of the, the body's activities. And it does this through three different processes. So the first process that the nervous system is responsible for is what's known as sensory input. This is all the information that's coming into the body from the external environment. So what you're seeing, vision, is sensory input. What you're hearing is sensory input. What you smell, what you taste, what you feel. These are all examples of sensory input. If you look at this picture over here, we've got a person who is looking forward and in their external environment, there is a glass of water. So actually seeing that glass of water, those light rays go through the eyes back into the brain and that is what's known as sensory input. So sensory input happens through what are known as sensory neurons or they're sometimes also called afferent neurons. And these are just neurons that are carrying electrical impulses toward the brain and toward the spinal cord. The other thing that we see the nervous system doing is a process which is known as integration. So integration happens entirely within the brain and spinal cord and it's going on through what are known as association or interneurons. So this particular activity is where we make a decision or we kind of process the sensory information that's coming in. So if we go back to this example that's given in the picture, this person has a glass of water that's in their environment. They see that glass of water, that visual input gets taken by neurons back to the brain, and in the brain is where we're gonna have that information actually processed through, again, these association neurons or interneurons. And when it's being processed, that's known as integration. So what's gonna happen in this process of integration is they're gonna see the water, so those visual cues are going to be interpreted, and you're gonna make a decision about it. Am I thirsty? Is that my cup? If so, then maybe the decision is I'd like to take a drink. The last step of the nervous system, the last thing that it does to kind of coordinate and regulate everything that's going on in the body is what's known as motor output. And motor output is what occurs following integration to allow us to interact with our environment. So motor output is information that's coming from the brain or spinal cord and going to peripheral parts of the body. So the example that you see here is we've got motor output that's traveling down what are known as motor or efferent neurons from the brain to the muscles in the arm. We've made the decision through integration that we're thirsty, this is our cup, and now we've got this motor output that's gonna tell our arm to reach out, pick up that glass, and take a drink. So this is just kind of a simple example of what the nervous system actually does through the sensory input integration and motor output. So with this first week, we're really just kind of learning some basic things about the nervous system, getting you kind of introduced to it since it's going to be such a big component to our 227 class. And so I want to kind of define um, for you some terms and talk a little bit about the way that the nervous system is subdivided with this slide here. And then with the last slide that I have with this particular lecture, we're going to look at the major cell type within the nervous system, which is known as a neuron, and talk a little bit about its structure, because understanding its structure is really important to understanding how it actually functions. But before we get to that, you'll see I've got this diagram here. So we've got this cartoon representation of somebody standing in anatomical position, and the nervous system is represented. So we've got the brain represented here in gray and the spinal cord down through here. The brain and the spinal cord together make up what's known as the central nervous system or the CNS. If you look outside of that, we've got all these nerves that are represented in yellow. So these are nerves that branch off of the brain. Some of them branch off of the spinal cord and they travel throughout other areas of the body. And all of these other nerves that branch off of the brain or branch off of the spinal cord, 
which are represented in yellow on this diagram, make up what's known as the peripheral nervous system or the PNS. So the last thing that I want to do is a little bit about the structure of, again, the major cell type that we find in the nervous system, which is known as a neuron, or you'll sometimes also see it referred to as a nerve cell. So if you look at this picture over here, this is probably pretty different from cells that you've seen previously, definitely different than the muscle cells that we just got done talking about. Up in here, we have an area of the cell that may look similar to what you're used to thinking of a cell looking like. So this is an area that's called the cell body or the soma. And you'll notice that right in here, it has a nucleus that's represented in blue. And then you'll notice that this cell body or soma has all of these extensions or processes that are coming off of it. So some of them are kind of shorter. These ones up in here in gray are a little bit shorter. One of them is really quite long. So this one that you can see in here kind of branching off from this particular area. What these processes do is they, in some cases, extend really long distances through the body to allow different nerve cells or neurons to communicate with each other by sending electrical signals down these processes. So I want to start about this area up in here and talk about these shorter processes that are gray. These are what are known as dendrites and the role of the dendrites is to conduct electrical signals toward the cell body or toward the soma. So the dendrites are acting kind of as sensory receptors. They're picking up changes that are happening in the environment of the neuron and when they detect a change they're going to send an electrical signal down the dendrite towards, again, the area of the soma. Sometimes you'll see neurons that have just a single dendrite. Sometimes you'll see neurons that have many dendrites, like you see in this picture here. But again, the dendrite's going to be sending electrical signals toward the soma. The other type of extension or process that we have coming off of a neuron is a little bit more complicated. So it's known as the axon. It's sometimes also referred to as the nerve fiber because it's kind of long, like a long rope or a fiber, if you will. So I wanna talk a little bit about the anatomy um, of this neuron or of this nerve fiber so that we are prepared to start talking about its physiology with the next folder. So if you look at this picture here, you'll notice there is kind of a little triangle shaped area that attaches the cell body or the soma to the axon or the nerve fiber. This area is called the axon hillock. It's sometimes also referred to as the trigger zone. And the reason for that is when a neuron generates an electrical signal, it's going to initiate from this particular area. So trigger zone, because that's where our action potential or our electrical signal is going to generate from. And then that electrical signal is going to travel down the axon away from the cell body. So one way to kind of remember the difference between an axon and a dendrite is to remember that axon begins with A and it's sending that electrical signal down it away from the cell body of the neuron. One of the things that's kind of unique about axons is there is always just a single axon. So we have just a single axon here that's coming away from the neuron. You'll notice that it does actually divide down in here. So these divisions are what are known as collaterals. And if you follow this out even further past the collaterals, you'll notice that it starts to branch. So this is kind of an artist simplified representation of a neuron. In reality, what we would see is that the average neuron branches about 10,000 times. And then each one of these little tips out here at the end of the branch is going to be hooked up to another cell, to a gland, something like that, allowing this particular neuron to communicate with about 10,000 different cells. So we've got all these terminal branches that are out here. You may notice at the very tip of a branch, we have kind of a swollen area, which is known as the synaptic knob. 
The synaptic knob is the area where we actually have neurotransmitters stored within the neuron. So this is a chemical that's going to allow the neuron to communicate with the next cell or the muscle or the gland or whatever it is that's happening to have itself connected to. The last thing that I want to talk about, if you look at this axon, you'll notice that it's wrapped in kind of these yellowish cells all the way down. So they kind of wrap that axon almost 360 degrees, somewhat like a hot dog bun, if you will. And all of these together make up what is known as the myelin sheath. And the myelin sheath is really, really important to the function of neurons. So it's going to help neurons to be able to send their electrical signals as quickly as possible. And it's also going to help to insulate those electrical signals. You'll notice you really can't see it up in here so much, but as we get down kind of further away from the cell body, you'll notice that these cells that make up the myelin sheath aren't actually continuous. They're not in contact with each other, but in between each one of these cells, we have a little area of bare nerve fiber or bare axon that's exposed. And those areas are what are known as the nodes of Ranvier. When we get an electrical signal or an action potential moving down an axon, what actually happens is that signal jumps from node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier to node of Ranvier. It's basically only those bare exposed areas that are going to depolarize and repolarize to allow the electrical signal to travel down the axon. The reason for this is it's a lot faster if the neuron only has to depolarize these little areas in between. It's a lot slower if the entire length of the axon has to depolarize and repolarize to get an electrical signal out to the synaptic knobs where we can then communicate with another cell.